And he, in a way, replaces another big name. Marcus Ambrose, of course, shocked the racing world of the Australian Grand Prix when he announced that at the end of this season, he will be going NASCAR racing in the United States. Greg Russ looks at the fallout of that decision, short term and long term. How did you personally feel when he made his announcement at the Grand Prix? Uh, a little bit disappointed to be truthful because he is so good at what he does that uh, to be not working with him in the future is disappointing. You come across someone that is that good and um, you know, it'd be sad to see him go. I think if, uh, if I was 20 or 30 years younger I'd be over there working so I really do enjoy it and you know I think I'll be over there watching Marcus. In the same way they build winning race cars, Stone Brothers Racing has played a big part in shaping the champion, Marcus Ambrose. Now comes the difficult task of finding a replacement that fits the distinct SBR mould. All options are being considered, from championship rookies to proven winners. When do you think you'll make a decision on it, Ross? Well, we're certainly not going to make a decision before mid-July, um, around that time. All sorts of names have been mooted from Todd Kelly, who's on a one-year deal with HRT, Mark Winterbottom, the 2003 Development Series champion, and Stephen Richards, who drove for the Stones in the team's first Bathurst win, 1998. Since then, the big race has eluded this squad, and every effort is being made to win it back this year. How important in the overall scheme of things is winning Bathurst this year, do you think? Oh, it's very important, especially with Marcus going. He's badly wants to win it. We were the last four team to win it, and we're desperate to be the next team to win it. And we are putting an extra effort in this year to see if we can make that happen. Oh, it's a significant part of it, to be truthful. Uh, it's a box that we haven't ticked, and that's disappointing. Uh, we need to win it. We want to win it. We think we have a good idea of what we need to do to win it. Yeah, obviously pretty disappointing. You go there to try and win each year. But I guess this year we're a little bit more prepared with our co-drivers. We've got them earlier this year. We've already got our co-drivers signed up, so that's got to be a big help. We get them in the car earlier and they get a few more miles. And obviously with a lot of other teams, they can pair their two number one drivers together, whereas we've got to bring two other guys into the team to go to Bathurst with our different sponsors on each car. Good results at Sandown and Bathurst will be imperative for those endurance drivers, Warren Luff and Luke Gildon, as they press for selection. The early announcement, media attention and the pending loss of Ambrose could be seen as destructive to the psyche of this outfit, but these gritty racers have no intention of letting anyone else become the champion team. And Marcus is determined to make it three drivers' titles in a row. For all the unity, there is a little division. Russell Ingalls' sign of the garage made a pact at Christmas time to wrestle the number one plate from Ambrose. They want to beat Marcus while he's here, not become winners once he's gone. Ingle has spent countless hours studying the champion's data and analysing his own weakness, qualifying. You know, the enforcer thing is still there and he can still muscle when he needs to, but I think Rusty's come of age and he's a hard driver, but he's a smart driver now, and that's always been the difference. You know, he's always pulled up short because he's been a bit hot-headed and sort of sent somebody off into the grandstand and paid the price for it, and now... He's sort of out there to win instead of sort of being the spectacle, really. So I think he's got what it takes. I think this year we'll do it. There's no doubt Marcus Ambrose will be missed from this picture in 2006. This is, of course, the traditional pre-season group shot for all the drivers. We saw the Formula One drivers doing this on the main straight at Albert Park just a couple of weeks ago. And I was talking to a couple of French commentators from the European Motors TV who are here to cover the race, another sign of the boom in V8 supercar popularity. And uh, I'll tell you what, from what they tell me, these guys could go to Paris and they might get a few free drinks bought for them and sign a few autographs over there. It's very big. We'll be back after this. And